Uh, I have Brother Hamlin coming, uh, not just for the sake of it. Well, we haven't had a speaker in a long time. I, I, I'm bringing him in. Uh, uh, truthfully, I, I don't know, maybe this could go left unsaid, but uh, I really started following him and in, uh, investigating him and wondering who he was when I heard some people hating on him. <clears throat> I heard some, some folks kind of, by the way, usually the haters are people not getting anything done. Uh, and I heard some folks hating on him, and I thought, well, I'm going to give this guy a listen. And uh, listen to him, and I thought, well, I like him. Amen. And I like what he's got to say. Amen. And not only do I like what he's got to say, but I like how he says it. Come on. And uh, I'm having him, Miss Jesse, out of spite. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm having him. Um, <laughs> and I thought, well, <clears throat> uh, any man who's got haters has probably got something worth saying. Uh, now, not everybody who's got haters has got something worth saying. Uh, I, I, I'm on a hater bandwagon here and there. And we, Brother Jerry, we talked to Nicole yesterday. And of course, hate's a strong word. We know. But um, just for the sake of the example here, uh, uh, not everybody who's disliked is worth following. But if somebody's following the Lord Jesus and people don't like him, well, I'm hopping on that bandwagon. So um, uh, I'm having him come because I think he can help us. Because he may, as Pastor Jackson said, he may say something, just what I've said, but says it is that he says it in a different way that just hits home with you like never has before. Um, and, and he may he may say something, he may there may be something about him, about his testimony, about his story, about his life uh, 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 situations that just they speak to you differently. Why? Because of Brother John Hamlin as, a, as a, a, a saved man has the Spirit of God in him. And you as a saved individual have the Spirit of God in you. The Spirit can talk with your spirit and you be helped by it. You're helped by it. Now there have been many times. You know, I've heard my, my parents say something growing up in, in church and, and whatnot, family devotions. And, um, you know, somebody else, maybe a visiting speaker, a missionary, somebody comes in and and says the same thing, but it's like this time it just broke loose. This time it just opened up, and I, I was able to to grow uh, and and uh, be blessed by it. So, Brother John Hamlin coming, he'll be a blessing to us. He'll be a blessing, and I don't I don't want you to miss that. Uh, now, Second Peter chapter three, uh, I have been admittedly so enjoying going through Scripture, really just verse by verse. Verse by verse, uh, I have been doing that, and I thought, man, this is a not, this is a wonderful way to to teach and to preach. Literally, systematic, uh, just through uh, uh, verse by verse and thought by thought. Um, but um, for the sake of time uh, and uh, my poor reading ability, uh, we're going to just jump to verse nine, and we're going to read through verse eighteen. The Bible says, "The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness." But his long suffering to us were not willing that any would perish or should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens uh, being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt away with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwell righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also other scriptures unto their own risen, uh, with uh, destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away 
with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. So he's, there's a lot of thoughts. There's all kinds of places that we could have parked and said, this is this, and this is this, and this is this. But this is the text verse. All these things, all these things will be dissolved. You're going to heaven. You've got your mind fixed on it. Um, uh, he's emphasizing the, these, these uh, next four words. But grow in grace. All these things are going to happen. Don't be led astray. But grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. You say, well, Brother Jackson, how do I grow in grace? How do I grow in grace? Well, um, if you, uh, for sake of time, I won't go through it, but if you go back to uh, chapter 1, chapter 1, uh, oh, verse, uh, verse 5, verse 6, it says, but grow, he says, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, virtue knowledge, and the knowledge of heaven. These are the graces that we are supposed to grow in. You know, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things because of Christ. No, no, no. It says I can do all things through Christ. Well, how do we do, what is through? Okay, so I saw, I'm so glad we have an every word Bible. And every word Bible, because even those obscure words, which we just kind of brush over or go over, add to your faith, okay? But grow in grace. You and I are going to grow. You're going to. You're going, and, and I'm, I don't want to jump ahead in my notes here, but you're going to grow. How you grow, or if you will, in what soil you grow is up to you. It's up to you. You know, uh, a, a lot of fellas, they go to, um, and I'm sure some of you guys can vouch for this, a lot of guys go to jail for extended periods of time or even prison, and they come out, they come out worse offenders than when they went in. Well, why? Because of the soil they planted themselves in. Now, a lot of guys can come out better. Uh, I don't mean to throw it out as a cliche, but they get jailhouse religion, and it sticks. That's cool, that, that's, but those are few and far between. Most guys go into prison and learn the trade and the craft even better. Which, by the way, the guys that they learned it better from all got caught. The best guys to learn from are the guys who don't get caught. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, Paul talks about that. It, it, it's sin when it's finished, when forced death. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, this, Paul says here, uh, uh, grow in these things. Grow in Grow in, uh, in, in, in give diligence to these things. So don't just get saved and think everything's just, you're just going to start growing like a, a giant sycamore and, 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 and just naturally God's going to come in and do all the work. No, your spiritual growth is your choice. Your growth is your choice. Now, does the Lord perform a good work and perform it until the day of Christ Jesus? Yes, He does. Does He try to work in us and He that we have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ Jesus? Amen. That's great. That's wonderful. He, there is a part that God does. But God does not force it on us. You read your Bible because you want to. You came to church today because you, you, you either, I don't know, but you came here on your own. Now, maybe some of you kids will force you here. Uh, but you came here. Your thought, your freedom, you came here, here you are. God did not bend your arm this morning and say, get that church. Now, maybe you came here this morning thinking, I'm coming because I don't want the conviction of missing or skipping on my mind all week. I just don't want to have to deal with it, so I'm going to go and um, just kind of uh, uh, relieve the, the pressure valve on this thing called guilt. Uh, okay, whatever. For whatever reason you're here, you're here. But make it count. Make, make salvation count. You're already going to heaven. You're already going to heaven. Why? Because... You're like this really good person? No, because you've been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ that we talked to, we talked about, that we preached on for three weeks. Man, you're saved. You're saved. Hallelujah. Man, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head? You know, I'm skipping verses here, but for such a worm as I, I'm going to heaven, not of my own works, not of my own volition, not of my own righteousness, but of his righteousness. That's great, I'm going to heaven. But the scriptures tell us that we can receive an abundant entrance into heaven. An abundant entrance into heaven. Or more like, a lot of Christians are going to get up there and the saints of old are going to be watching us and be like, whew, you barely made it, didn't you? 
No, of course, with the blood of Christ, we're going to be like, man, man, oh man, we left so much on the table. I put these up there, Miss Jesse. Uh, uh, grow in grace. Grow in grace. Okay, so grow. Grow. It is implied that you're going to grow. You're going to go. They always say that a tree, a tree falls in whichever way it's leaning. Okay, it's not a matter of uh, it's not a matter of if the tree falls, but when the tree falls. Let a tree stay um, in the conditions in which many of them have been in. You'll find that a tree over time it's going to going to fall one way or another. One way or another. Okay, so just as implying as a leaning tree may fall, just as implying as on our Wednesdays when Jesus said to his disciples, when ye fast, not if ye fast. When you fast. All right, so grow. Grow. You're going to grow. So he says, grow where? Grow how? Grow in grace. Well, what grace? God's grace. God's grace. Grow in God's grace. Now, the blessings we can enjoy in Christ um, include not only being redeemed, amen. I'm redeemed, redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the works of my hand. No, because the Bible says, not of works lest any man should boast. Because if it was by my hand, I would be ashamed to walk around and singing, redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Me, I did it. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But it is uh, 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 redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. It's a wonderful thing to be redeemed. But here's the wonderful thing about the Christian life. You can also be renewed. Amen. Renewed. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. If any man... Be in Christ. He is a new creature. Behold, all things pass away. All, or behold, all things pass away. All things become new. If any man be in Christ, if any man go through Christ, I can be renewed through Christ who strengthens me. I can grow in grace. In Christ. Not just any grace. Not the grace of the judicial system. Uh, not the grace of uh, you know, the government, not the grace of your parents, not the grace of the church. Unless the church is the mirror of the scripture. The grace of God. Uh, the word baptism is used in scripture. Water baptism, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Um, uh, and we undergo, we undergo. The Bible says the washing of, uh, uh, of regeneration. The washing of regeneration, or if you will, renewed by the Holy Spirit. Renewed. Renewed. So from the baptism in the Spirit and following the Lord and believer's baptism, buried in the likeness of His death, raised in the likeness of His resurrection. Right. Behold, all things are going to... Paul talks about that in, in Romans, about the law and being dead and, and, um, and grace and life. Man, it's a, 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 a incredibly deep, very meaty, as Pastor Jackson said, ah, there's some of that stuff in there. It is, it's, in, it's really, really good, but it's, it's, um, it's some tough meat to chew on. Uh, but um, uh, uh, oh, Romans 6 says we are to walk in newness of life. To walk in newness of life. Some of these primary songs and bus songs ought to be said in the, in, in the church auditoriums. This one for here. Uh, what in the world is a six-year-old and an eight-year-old and a nine-year-old sitting on the bus singing, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. That's wonderful. I'm glad we're laying that philosophy down. But the ones who really ought to be singing that is the ex-gangbanger and the ex-drug dealer and the, the ex-prostitute and the ex-guy uh, uh, who used God's name in vain and the ex-thief and the ex-convict and, and the, the guys and the, the, the women and the people who used to live those lives. Lifestyles. They ought to be the ones in the auditoriums now singing, The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Praise God. And we. Amen. Man, why? And I'm not. Again, I understand. I'm not here I'm stepping on people's toes. This isn't a rebuke message. This isn't any of that. But it's. Man, evaluate yourself and see. Man, if I got saved three years ago, where am I now on my spiritual journey? Have you grown? 
Is there growth? If, did, have you become stagnant in your growth? Now, if you have become stagnant in your growth, I'll tell you why. It's because you're not in the grace. Do you have God's grace? Yes, but you're not growing in His grace. You have taken His grace. We have taken His grace for granted. We've taken it and abused it and crucified Him afresh by going back to the lifestyle that we lived prior to being saved, prior to being right with God. Good. Amen. Now you say, Brother Jackson, I want to grow in, in, in grace. Well, then you've got to get in the right environment. You've got to be planted. You've got to be rooted. You've got to get in. And I said, i got to read the Bible and I threw some, you know, it, it's cool. It's more than cool. It's awesome. It's life changing. I, I, listen, I, if you're anything like me in the context of hopes and dreams and goals and vision for your life and for your family, you, you're not done. You, you, you have things you want to accomplish. You have things you, you, you want to do, and, 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 and I don't mean, you know, climb Mount Everest. But I mean that, that, that um, uh, you want to grow in your, your communion with God. Who in this room, I don't, this is rhetorical, don't raise your hand, but who in this room doesn't want to know God? Who in this room is like, eh, it is, but I'm cool, God and I, you know, we're good. If, you, if anybody has that attitude, that's a sign that you're not. Amen. I'm good with where I am with God. Sure, if it's in context of growing. God knows where I am. God knows what's going on in my heart. God and I commune and we, we talk all the time. And God knows where I am and I know that I'm not all that I'm supposed to be. But I'm growing. I'm growing. And that's, that's all that He requires. You know, God, all that God requires from you, the key, here's the golden key, the key, the key. Let's boil it all down to this thing. It's called ability. God does not ask, let's see, um, who's somebody who's uh, freshly saved? Okay, uh, I'll pick on Jeff. Jeff, God does not require you to love him like Doug Jackson loves him who's been saved for 36 years? Uh, 40, 40 years? 43. 43 years. He's old. Yeah, he's old. <laughs> he does not require you to know and love and walk with him like Doug Jackson is. You can, only, you can only love God according to your ability. You can only walk with God and serve God according to, the Bible actually says, according to thy, thy faith and thy ability, your own ability. So don't look at somebody and be like, oh man, they've been doing that. I'll never, no, 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 your ability. And you can grow only according to your ability. There's some pine trees out at our house. And uh, there's one, it just does not seem to be growing. It's planted, it's standing in the front yard, it's all the way up in the front left corner there. And it's so small sometimes I have to be careful not to run it over with the lawnmower. That tree, it's, it, it, it's not supported um, by, um, uh, by the runoff of the house uh, where the, you know, so water comes down and you have a runoff. Uh, so you don't get moisture in your basement and things like that. Uh, gutter system and all that. But the, the runoff, the runoff, it's too far out. It doesn't get all that moisture. It bakes in the sun all day long. It doesn't have the same environment. But what I have noticed is very small, incremental growth. All that matters is that tree continues to grow. Do we want it to grow faster? Yes. Why? Well, because it, a giant tree, a big tree, I mean, you can climb it. You can enjoy its shade. Now, I don't climb trees anymore. Last time I climbed a pine tree, I got stuck in one. I think I was like set seven or something. Uh, but um, uh, Jesse and me out there, I uh, will fast forward through that story. Uh, but, um, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but of course we want that tree. We want the tree to grow fast and large and be useful. Be useful. Well, if the, dan the danger is this in churches, Jeff and Brianna, hurry up and grow so you can be useful. Uh, 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 Brother Frank and Miss Kilton, grow so you can be useful. Anthony and Brother Jerry, grow in the Lord and become all these things so you can be useful. It's great. Being useful is great. But don't rush the process. And I don't mean take time to waller in a sinful lifestyle. But I'm saying don't, God's not in a hurry with you becoming perfect. Right. 
It's a slow process and it takes time. Yeah. It takes time. Man, you can go to McDonald's and get yourself what they call a burger slapped together very quickly. <laughs> and you can consume it. And you know, one bun's over here, the other one's over here. And it's all you know, slapped together. It's fast food. Or you can go sit down at a restaurant somewhere and can put together a, a, an artisan burger for you. Extra blue cheese crumble, brother Sean. Uh, uh, I love blue cheese. I'm a blue cheese fan, man. Uh, and and not, not blue cheese dressing, dressing, but like real blue cheese. Um, uh, we had some blue cheese in the fridge. It started off as American cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, you can you, you can rush the process. Sure, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, and, and, and become this this thing. Sing in the choir so everybody know how great you are. Put on a burgundy jacket and take the, other, take the offering. Preach a sermon. Teach a class. Well, that's great. Anybody can slap together uh, a facade Christian growth. You can slap together a McDouble Christianity all you want. I, 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 but I, I, I believe the Lord desires a quality. A quality. Something with that took time and care. God is into the the uh, the minute things, the jot and the tittle, and the the um, the uh, the seemingly small. God wants us to take advantage of those things and and use them. That's why we can't read Second Peter three eighteen and say grow in grace and then go well, what graces without remembering Second Peter chapter one. Grow in these things. Give and he says give all diligence. Add to your faith. Well, the scriptures tell us in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith. So when it says in three to grow in grace, and it says in one, add to your faith, they're on the same team. They're holding hands here. Right. Add to your faith all these things. All these things. Now you go through and read them. And we had them memorized last year for school. Um, memorized instead of mastery. we got to master the verses. That word have I hit my... Oh, that was you? Sounded like somebody playing the bongos. <laughs> not, not here, brother. Uh, but uh, uh, growing grace, uh, why? Your faith. Your faith. All these things. All these things. These, this love, virtue, godliness, brotherly kindness, temperance, charity. Grow in these things. Grow in these things. So, um, uh, we can have not only a redeemed life, but a renewed life. A renewed life. Just as a healthy, physical person is to grow. Man, I weighed Lucas in Houston and myself last night. If the boys weigh what the scale says, they're going to be monsters. <laughs> they're, I'm, I got to stay on their good side. Um, uh, but, uh, and then, well, never mind, let's move on. Uh, uh, but um, uh, just as healthy kids, healthy people, they're, they're, they grow. Folks, it's just as natural for someone who's just been born again to spiritually grow. But you, be, you have to choose to do it. The sad part of this, though, is not all, not all Christians grow spiritually. Many people have been Christians for years and years and years with little change or any improvement. Man, if you are still where you were five years ago, what are you doing? What's going on? What's happened? What, what's happened? You know, we, we, we grow to a certain point and we say, okay, I'm good, and then we, we move along. But there are no shrubs. In, in God's garden. There, are, there is nothing small in God's garden. As long as we stay rooted in that grace, we can become sycamores. We can become mountains for God. You say, well, I could never be a brother Tom Malone. No, but you can be a you. Tom Malone became what he became because he gave according to his ability. You have no idea if you will shrink in comparison or, or uh, uh, go beyond the greatness of some of these people that we revere and that we honor who held the line of fundamentalism in Christianity. Unless you give of your ability. Many Christians for years, years they don't grow. I think of the parable of Jesus. Or not the parable, but the story of Jesus when he was in that, that, that home and he was teaching. And those four men brought their friend who had palsy. He was paralyzed and they couldn't get in. The house was packed. They couldn't get in. It said for the press. The press. Because CNN and Fox and MSNBC, they were... The press. 
There was too many people. They couldn't get us. So what did they do? They climbed up on the roof. They tore the roof apart and lowered them in. They lowered them in. You said, well, Brother Jackson, where are, you, where are you going with this? Well, there were some religious people. And the Bible says they were sitting by. Sitting by. The people who knew the word. The people who had the prophets. The people who, 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 who uh, uh, wrote it and taught it. The rabbis of the synagogues. As they sat around, there were four nobodies lowering their friend down to be brought before the healer. To be brought before him. And too many Christians, we get filled up with the knowledge of, of religion and we find ourselves all these years later sitting by. Well, wait, what? How have I grown for the Lord? Have I grown in any of these capacities found in 2 Peter chapter 1? Is my charity greater? Is my temperance greater? Is my patience greater? Is my godliness greater? Is my brotherly kindness greater? Am I, am I, am I more godly? Am I more holy? You say, well, Brother Jack, I don't know how to judge myself. Refer back to chapter 1. And look at yourself in the context and say, am I, am I mirroring this? Am I growing in any of these areas? And if I'm not, how do I begin to do that? Folks, there are more and, and usually often less useful, less useful to the Lord uh, all these years later than when we first became Christians. First become Christians, man, you're on fire. Hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. You're on fire for God. You want to do something for God. And then, and, and then you get smart enough to be like, oh, I can just kind of, I can just kind of chill. I don't really have to. No, man, it's a sad statistic that they say um, 20%, or is it 10%? I'm going to run with this number. 20%, 20% of a church congregation is 80% of the work. It shouldn't be that way. Should, now you're always you're gonna have people who okay we have people in our church they can only go soul winning an hour why because it's according to their ability it's according to their ability well oh well, I went five how many did you go it doesn't matter I went according to my ability you go according to your ability and you'll grow according to your ability but don't be like these folks who just sit by just sit by how long have you been saved how long have you been saved by the blood redeemed by the blood and you haven't been renewed. Failing to grow. Failing to grow, what do we do? We become stagnant. We become stagnant, like a pool of water. And that's because spiritual growth is a choice. You've got to choose to put that away. You've got to choose to say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Listen, uh, the older I get, and the, and, uh, I, uh, the more I understand spiritual warfare, the more I talk to myself. The devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness. The devil is not, you know, sitting on my shoulder, but I believe there is demonic forces, so to speak, sitting on my shoulder. Amen. It's called temptation. I'll talk to it now. No. Nope. There are many voices in the earth, in the world. Many voices in the world. Some within and some without. But when there's something inside of me telling me to do wrong, I said, go take a hike. I'm not doing it. No. I know your voice now, and you're not going to win anymore. The things that you used to get me to do, I'm not doing them anymore. Oh, they'll try harder. You think you think you're you're a fight for that demonic force? You're not. You're not. You say, Brother Jackson, so what? We're up, it's a losing battle? No, so many people have a bow, they have a sword, they have a knife, they have a gun, and they don't know how to wield it. And what we have here is we have a hammer and we don't know how to drive a nail. We have a sword and we don't know how to slice or chop. We've got a bow and an arrow and we don't know how to fire that thing. We have a shield and we don't know how to block. We have a light and we don't know how to shine it. you got to know how to wield this thing. That's why, where is that? Where is that? Every service matters for you to thrive. If you want to succeed, now maybe you're comfortable. Maybe you say, no, I'm good. I'm just going to ride this wave to heaven. I, hey, but if you say, man, I want more. I want to see God do something in my life. I want to see God change this. I want to see God make a difference in here. Well, if you've got to see God make a difference, you've got to be willing to do something different. If you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. You've got, to be, you've got to want to mix it up. You've got to want to mix it up. Before I stopped driving a truck full time, well, before I stopped driving a truck, um, uh, how, you know how many times I wanted to quit driving a truck before I officially stopped driving a truck? Lots. Lots. But I thought I could balance pastoring and driving a truck. 
I thought I could bounce them and bounce them, and, and I, I went from uh, Wise to Penske and, and uh, back to Wise and then over to these guys and over and just kind of trying, just trying to survive. And it just dawned on me one day, man, if you don't take a leap of faith, if, they, if you don't step out on faith like Peter did out on that water with Jesus, if you don't do something drastic, Mr. Jackson, then you'll always get what you'll always got. And that's your situation today. That's mine also. If you stay in that world's soil, if you stay in the dirt of the world, then you're going to grow in the things of the world. You're going to grow in, in, in the philosophies of it, and you're going to grow in. Man, look at all these students going to these make these universities, which are breeding grounds for Marxism and liberalism and communism and fascism. Amen. And you wonder why the things that are happening in our chaos is, or, or, or happening on our campus is all chaos. Well, it's because the, 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 the students who were radical back in, oh, I suppose the 60s and 70s have become professors now, and they are the ones teaching the next generations, and those kids, those students, are in the soil of anarchy. They're in the soil of those things. That's why you got to be planted in the Word of God. That's why you got to root yourself down into the Word of God and cling to it, be planted in it, and then you'll begin to grow by it. You say, man, I don't know that I'll ever grow in Christ. You'll never grow in Christ. You'll never grow in Christ unless you be stopped and decide to get planted in these graces of chapter 1. Excuse me. So, we are encouraged. We are encouraged to make the right choice. You and I have a choice. And if we stick to it, there'll be no, if we don't stick to it, there'll be no spiritual growth. So we're encouraged by the Word of God to grow spiritually. Now, how am I encouraged to do it? Do I read in the Bible and it says, Jake, you can do it. Go, Jake. Go, three rivers. Heaven's got a you know, cheerleader section. Pom-poms and horns. You can do it. No. No. How are we encouraged through the Bible to do it? We've been commanded to do it. That's an encouragement. Now, not in the encouragement you and I take encouragement, but it's encouragement in, in um, the nudge to jump into the pool. Encouragement is also the nudge, just the, just the, the push you needed. And I go upstairs and I see my kid's room and I say, sons, this, do the three little pigs live in here? I'm going to give them some words of encouragement to clean their room. I'm going to encourage them to clean their room through what? Through, if you clean your room, I'll give you ice cream. No, if you don't clean your room, I'm going to eat ice cream in front of you. We're all going to load up as a family. We're going to drive to uh, Culver's or Kilwins downtown, and your mother and I are going to sit there and eat ice cream right in front of you while you sit there with that puppy dog and say, Brother Jackson, you would not do that. Give me the money, I promise I will. Uh, <laughs> Uh, bro, well, that's me. Well, I want to encourage them to keep their room. Keep their room clean. Keep a clean house. Keep it organized. I understand having stuff. And don't let HDTV deceive you. That's, a, that's lies. There's a closet filled with all their junk laying around the house somewhere. You open up the door, the proverbial avalanche falls out. If you see anybody's house, it's always perfect. They don't really live there. Uh, <laughs> It, we have stuff. There's, it's just stuff. All right, well, organization. Like, man, you walk into my father-in-law's garage, I look at it and go, a bomb went off in here. How can you find anything in here? But yet, he, it works for him. He knows, if I go over there and give me that 10 millimeter socket, ha uh ha, -huh. I'm not gonna find a 10 millimeter. You go and you dig it, there it is. Uh, that works for him. I'm not talking about everything symmetrical and perfect. No, but it's some sort of order, an order for yourself. And God has encouraged us by his order of his word. He says, I commanded you. I'm commanding you to grow. And now, uh, it's, it's, it's stated in the Great Commission. The Great Commission is found in Matthew 28. Jesus commanded his apostles to make disciples. He says, I command you to go make disciples. Baptize and teach them. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you all way, even unto the end of the world. Now, he says, I want them to grow. These people are going to become obedient, excuse me, learners. And constantly growing as they learn to obey Jesus. How can I grow? O-B-E-E-I-E-N-C-E. 
Men, folks, obedience is the best way to grow. Obedience. And then not only is it stated in the Great Commission to go and teach and baptize, of which there is growth that comes from that, but then it's backed up again. It's hit again by the, um, the uh, letters of Peter and Paul. It says we're to grow in grace. And not only to grow in grace, but to grow in grace in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We're supposed to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. What would Jesus do? Most people don't know. Most people are like, I have no idea what Jesus would do. No, we sing that song. Um, uh, uh, I saw Jesus in you. I saw Jesus in you. And then we sing, find us faithful. Find us faithful. And the chorus says, uh, oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe. And the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Man, if you want to make it, you're going to have to get planted in that soil. Amen. If you want your kids to make it, if you want your marriage to make it, if you want to make it, make it where? Well, you make it to heaven, but make it with an, a, an abundant entrance. Of, uh, make it where you say, God, I, I gave my all. Man, I have run my race with patience, and I forgot the things of old, and I pressed toward the mic, and I mark an icon to God. And I, man, I pushed forward, and I know I wasn't perfect. I fell down a whole lot, but I kept getting up, and I kept pressing on. That's what it's all about. Life's not about living it perfectly. Life is about living it for Him, saying, a just man's going to fall, but I'm going to get back up. I'm going to get back up. Now, He stated it over and over, what like Jesus did and the apostles did. Peter begins this, this, uh, this letter, 2 Peter, uh, describing how we are to grow. Verse 5 through 8, this is how you grow. Add to your faith. These, uh, they're called graces. Add to your faith. And then he says, not only just diligently, but abound in them. Abound. That means have a whole lot of it. Have a whole lot of it. Uh, I could take a moment and, and, and park on brotherly kindness and talk about how poorly Christians treat each other. I could take a moment and park on charity and talk about how tightly people's fists are gripped around possessions and money. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Get your hand off your face. Wake up. It's the Word of God. Come on. Abounding in graces, such as staying awake during church. Being fruitful, which implies growth. Being fruitful. Christians who do not grow are rebuked, are admonished in Hebrews chapter 5 and in chapter 6. Grow! What's wrong with you? He said. What's wrong, with that? What's wrong with you? A plant that's got the right food, that's got the right soil, that's got the right amount of sun, that's got the right amount of water, and it's not growing. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong at the root of that. Christians who don't grow, something's wrong. Spiritual growth is not an option, folks. It's not an option. It's reserved for a few select Christians. Who the, the Word of God commands us to grow. We should always remember that spiritual growth is a choice. And it's a choice that requires, the Bible says, diligence. Diligent effort. Unlike physical growth. People grow physically by default. No, little Emmy, she's going to grow. She's just going to. She already has. She's going to grow and grow and grow and grow. Um, uh, they just grow by default. No, there's no effort required. Uh, we mature physically, whether we want to or not. You know, uh, it's Friday, the, the teenagers um, kind of yapping at each other in a the very teenager way. And I thought, when I was a teenager, I said stuff like that. Man, I was dumb. And I thought, I'm going to correct them. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Regret will get them down the road. And they'll look back and go, man, I'm I was emotionally immature, they will say. I look back at some of the things that I said or did, I'm like, man. Oh, to be young again, right? You say, oh, to go back and do it over. No, you, you, you got to grow. You will grow. And they will grow. So don't think that just because you grow older, <clears throat> excuse me, you're growing spiritually. Just because you grow older, you're growing spiritually, that is not the case. It can, it can be. Sure, it sure can be, but it's not always the case. I know many um, older uh, saved individuals who are not serving the Lord in any capacity. Um, uh, spiritual growth, um, it, it requires diligent effort. And spiritual growth requires 
Not just diligent effort, but concentrated effort. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So while we work out our salvation, as the Bible says, God is at work in us. As you are planted in that, that soil, as you are growing in grace and getting in a, a fellowship with Jesus Christ and trying to be in love with Him and follow Him and obey Him and be involved in, in church and ministry, and you're, and you're getting involved, and you say, oh God, continue to work on me. God, open my heart, open my mind, that I may be wondrous things out of thy law and grow. God is at work in you. God is at work in you. But you have to be the one. You are the catalyst. You are the one that makes the choice. Jesus said it requires labor. Paul wrote that it requires work and pressing on. We said, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Doesn't that sound like growth? Still pressing on. Oh, new heights I'm gaining every day. Oh. Still praying. Hey, thank you. I'm pressing on the upward way. I'm pressing on the upward way. If you're not pressing on the upward way, you are pressing somewhere else. Again, Peter wrote that, uh, that it requires diligence. So, <clears throat> like physical health, spiritual growth requires regular exercise. Regular exercise. Uh, and then um, I'll stop it with this. You want to grow. God wants us to grow. He doesn't want you to stay where you are. Here you are. Man, you've been saved all these years and you're still stumbling with curse words. You've been saved all these years and you're still gawking at women walking by. Or having lustful thoughts come into our eye gate and into our mind and we entertain these things. It's really hard to do when Brother Pip walked by. I know. I just look at him. Man, I'll tell you what, Brother Pip. You, I don't know if you know this, some of you wouldn't, but Brother Pitt playing basketball back in the day, stay out of the lane. He did not care if you were 12, he would get an elbow to the chin face. <laughs> Brother Pitt, uh, he got that knee surgery done so he could go back to playing basketball, is that right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but truly, truly, is there growth? Man, you've been saved for 20 years and yet you still drink? You've been saved for all these years and yet you're still dealing? You've been saved for all these years and you still haven't grown in the way you treat your loved ones? You've been saved all these years and you, you, have, you don't have one Bible verse memorized? Saved and you've never told anybody about Jesus? You've never, you're like, I don't know how. How about just share your testimony about how you got saved and you right. figured it out? I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I don't know how to tell people how to be saved. Well, what did you do to be saved? What, what process? Because if you don't know, <laughs> you might want to make sure you know. Oh. And then secondly, then you are without an excuse, oh man. Without an excuse, you never told anybody about Jesus. Never shared a gospel track with anybody. Never looked anybody in, 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 in the eyeball and said, I want to let you know Jesus Christ loves you. Who Lucas and I open uh, 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 knock on the door and a guy answers the door of a male wearing a rose blouse woman's shirt and a jean skirt. And I looked at him and his name was Joshua. And I looked at him after a few moments of conversation. I looked at him in his eyes as his eyes began to fill with tears. And I said, Joshua, I want to let you know God loves you. You've never done that. This isn't a me versus you. This is a spiritual growth thing. Have you ever looked at a sinner in their eyeballs and told them Jesus loves them? Amen. Have you ever sent a kid to camp to hear gospel? Have you ever sent out money to a missionary on the mission field trying to win people to the Lord? To, to the Lord? Have you grown in these graces? If you haven't, you're growing somewhere else. Man, your, your stock market uh, investments can grow all you want, but what will a man give on that day of judgment? When he sees that he wasted his life on the temporal, he sacrificed the future and the eternal on the altar of the immediate, and we will we will fall on our knees, we will grit our teeth. Oh, how we will wish that we could rip, rip our clothes and sit in sat and in ashes and wear sackcloth on that day, but none will be available. Tears will be abundant because we have the opportunity to grow, and yet we didn't. God offers a year-round greenhouse in which we can grow, and yet we stay on the outside in the wilderness thinking we can do it on our own. You can't. 
You've got to get in communion with Jesus Christ. And the only way you do through that is fellowship with Him. And I know growing up it was daily, 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 daily fellowship. But some days you have the flu. Some days you just got your, your, your face wrenched on at the dentist. And you're like, I'm taking three days off. And you lay on your couch or you lay in your bed or you just suffer through life. And you didn't read your Bible that morning. And you, 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 you mumble the prayer. It doesn't mean you're the devil. It doesn't mean you're lost. It doesn't mean you're wicked. It just means you're human. And yet His grace is sufficient for you. But it doesn't mean we act outside of these graces that we've been given in 1 Peter chapter 1. Just because you have had a bad day doesn't mean you're allowed to bite people's heads off. We're supposed to grow in grace. And ask ourselves, what would Jesus do in this situation? But the wonderful thing, not only is it commanded, not only does it require effort, we're not doing it on our own. We are assisted by God. He didn't leave you to grow on your own. God is a wonderful gardener. He is the, the, um, the vineyard keeper. He helps purge the branches. He helps take out that, get out that bad fruit. He helps keep you healthy. The Bible says we're not alone. We're not alone. So while we work out our salvation, God is working on us. We can do all these things. Philippians chapter 2. Just as He was with us in producing our new birth, he doesn't leave us in, in, uh, in the, uh, the, the hospital. He doesn't leave us in the manger. He doesn't leave us on that newborn bed to say, okay, see you when you're older. No, He's there to nurse us. He's there to nurture us. He's there to help us grow. God desires to complete the work He started in us when He saved us. So we're not alone in our efforts and we're strengthened. God strengthens you. You're not left alone to grow on your own. God's going to be there with you. He strengthens you how, though? By His Spirit in our inner man. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Greater is I'll never be able to get the victory over this. No, you've already been given the victory. You've got to claim it, though. Right. It's your choice to pick it up or lay it down. It's your choice to charge hell with a squirt gun or retreat. It's your, your, your choice. He strengthens us. He empowers us. He empowers us. And the wonderful thing about that is Ephesians, He's given us the armor to stand against the wiles of the devil. I'll never win this spiritual battle. You would if you get up every day and put on the armor of God. Folks, there's no excuse not to grow. There's no excuse not to grow because Christ strengthens us to do so. He strengthens us to do so. So in conclusion, this thing about growth, not just any growth, but growth that is for good and growth that is for good is planted in the soil of God's garden. The heart of some, the Bible says, will grow dull. It will grow dull. The love of many will grow cold. Grow cold. Folks, there's a danger of growing weary and doing good. Um, I look around this room right now. I see people who play the piano and the organ and talk classes and grow buses and vacation Bible school and set up for big days and tear down for big days and clean up for big days and clean up after big days and stand out and do the turkey dinners and uh, do traffic and parking as they come in and all these things. Here you are busy, 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 busy and you're weary in doing good. You're weary in well-doing. You're weary in well-doing. And in doing so, if that's not watched after, there's a possibility of growing um, corrupt according to deceitful lusts the Bible says there's a danger of growing um, sort of tired against Christ tired against the ministry sort of jaded against people who don't see it and take it seriously like you do it, just, it drives me insane and I know it drives some folks insane about man this is this is God's building. These are God's people. These are God's pews. This is God's carpet. This is God's parking lot. This is God's roof. This is God. Now I want God to like, hey God, this is yours. How about you fix some stuff around here? <laughs> but he won't ever do what he can do until we do what we can do. Right. But like growth of a cancerous cell in our body, the wrong growth in us can be deadly. Now where are you, which way are you growing today? 
Which way are we growing? Are we becoming more knowledgeable of AI, artificial intelligence? That would show artificial intelligence on our behalf if we're putting more effort into that than into this real intelligence. Are we, are we growing more in, in our carnal nature than we are in the Word of God? Spiritual growth. Growth that's commanded. Growth that requires diligent effort. Growth that is assisted by God. And then, it, it, I, won't, I won't belabor this at all, but it's blessed by God. It is this kind of growth that Peter that Peter um, enjoined or wrote as he closed out his letter. Now, what kind of growth is taking place in your life today? Mr. Jennifer, will you come forward, please? What kind of growth is taking place in your life? Are you growing weary? Are you growing tired? Is it all just... A lot of folks, that's what happens. They just got, got, they get tired of it. They get... Because they're never really planted. Um, some people put it this way. They're plugged into the man instead of the man. They're plugged into God's man instead of God. And that's all cool. Follow me as I follow Christ, but you have to grow up to the point where you find your own outlet. Because the pastor's going to come in one day and be like, I had a really hard week, but I'm going to put on a... The pastor's a, a human. It's a human. You and your family and your spouse, and by the way, every, if you can read, if you can read, then you have an obligation to grow. There's no reason why any of you kids should stay same disobedience, same disrespect, same level of I don't care. Being a child is not an allowance for disregarding a relationship with God. So if we desire to experience the blessings of the right kind of growth, then we have to never forget that spiritual growth is a choice. It's a choice. Yes, God has his hand in something. But you have to choose to grow. If you tie God's hands up by saying no, then God's not going to force you to grow. He's not going to make you become something for his kingdom. You rob yourself of those blessings. So I ask you, are you making the right choices today? Are you making the right choices to help you grow spiritually? What did Jesus say? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, or upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Man, come unto Jesus today. I, mean, I tell you, lay off the burdens of the world today and come down here before the Lord in this moment of prayer and say, Dear God, I want to grow. Dear God, I don't know necessarily how to, but I heard something on growth this morning. And I, I know that I want to. I know that I want to. Lord, he quoted a little while ago. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Lord, I do. I'm hungry and I'm thirsty for righteousness. I want to grow. How do I do it, God? Show me the way. That right there is making the choice. The choice to grow.